Folks, we are going to repeat what is very likely similar to the early 1980s, where creative financing is getting deals done. We are now operating in a world where rates have been above 7%. And 8% for investors. We have the great sub two community led by the one and only Pace Morby. But did you know there are some mortgages, FHA, VA, and USDA, I believe, that actually have an assumption clause? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to the one and only Anna Kelly, who is currently in process testing this out to see if she can assume a loan. And we will be following up weekly to see if this goes through. But Anna, Welcome to the show. Tell us what's going on. Great. No, I'm happy to. I'm, I'm really excited that I'm under contract on a, a property. And you might be surprised to hear me as a primarily a multifamily investor buying a single family house for a rental again. I haven't bought single family houses as rentals in I think five or six years other than luxury vacation rentals, obviously. Um, but, you know, I, I really and bullish on single family houses in, in certain markets. And so I bought a single family house at the beginning of the year in San Antonio, Texas, and mm -hmm. I'm buying another single family house in San Antonio, Texas as a okay. rental. And I have it under contract as a loan assumption. And I'll tell you, um, as you mentioned, when we're in a 7% plus rate environment for primary occupants on a 30 year fixed, as investors, we're looking at a rate quite a bit higher than that, um, almost always. And, and regardless of whether you're going through a local bank or you're going through a an agency assumption of some sort. But what that does is it puts us in a negative leverage situation in most cases. And so if you're evaluating deals and you're looking for cash flow, because of the interest rates, almost nothing cash flows. Um, not when you build in you know, taxes and insurance maintenance, vacancy, property management. Some people forget to you know, factor those things in. But when you factor all those things in, we're really in a negative leverage situation for most rental properties if they're listed and unless you're finding them for a steal on the basis, well below market value. So I'm kind of in a phase in life where I don't want to buy stuff that I have to fix up substantially. I want things that are a little newer and a little more turnkey to add to my portfolio that's already very, very broad. And and so as an investor, I'm always thinking about how can I get creative? And as you mentioned, there are subject to deals that you can do. You can do sandwich lease option um, types of deals as well topic for another day, but I don't love those. Um, I know that there are more banks that are already calling um, deals due on sale that weren't before. I've heard of five in the last month, banks mm -hmm. that have called notes that were done as a subject to. So I thought, you know, if I could get in on a property that's a loan assumption where you involve the bank and you tell yes. them, hey, I'm buying this property that you have a mortgage on um, from the buyer that mortgaged the property from you, and I want to take over their loan. That's very, very different from a sub two deal where you're Absolutely. basically telling the seller, don't tell your mortgage company you're selling the property. I'll take over your payments and they'll never know. I just don't like that for a number of reasons. Reasons. But a loan assumption, you're saying, hey, bank, I'm buying this property and I just want to step in for the buyer and take over the payments at their existing mm -hmm. dollar amount and their existing rate. It's really hard to do, though, because not very many loans actually have a loan assumption clause that allows a buyer to mortgage a property and then sell it later and let someone else just take over the payments. Mm -hmm. There are three primary mortgages that have loan assumptions built in, and those are what we call agency loans. It's FHA, it's USDA, and it's VA. The three of them within their standard boilerplate, that's legalese for it's just standard in all their documents, um, mm -hmm. language, it says somebody can step in and assume this mortgage if they buy the property from you under certain conditions. And so the biggest thing I want listeners to understand is if you are a homeowner and you want to move and let's say house hack a house or a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex, already these loans, FHA, VA, and USDA are your best option to get in with very low money down. So you don't have to put in 20, 25% down. If you move in it, USDA is 100% financing. FHA is 3.5% financing. And VA can be to 100% financing depending on 
your allowances as a veteran. So it's really amazing if you um, want to house hack to try to find deals through those agencies. But what's even better is if you're going to live in it for a year and house hack it, you can qualify to assume loans from all three of those agencies. That, that's now, the here's key right the kicker. there. there. Yeah, that, yes. I just want to hit that again because I've researched this a little bit. I would love to assume uh, some loans you know, in Fresno, right? My market. I'm definitely focused on residential because I think, you know, the commercial stuff has a lot of pain coming. Yes. So I'm, I'm trying to buy singles just like you. I'm all of them. You can assume if you're going to be an owner occupant, right? That, yes. that seems very clear to me based yes. on credit conditions and all you have to qualify, but the assumption Absolutely. is there in the boilerplate. I'm yes, hearing that a couple of them may allow investors in some corner cases, which it sounds like you may be in one of those. Yes. So I will say I did a lot of research because I thought, you know, I haven't really tried to do a loan assumption in many, many years. And the reason most people don't talk about them is because number one, you can't generally do them as an investor, but we've been in a period of time where rates are going down, down, yeah, down they're going so that way. Better exactly. for me to finance new than ever take over someone's mortgage. Correct. So what I did is I started doing some research directly on um, lender websites that are direct lenders for FHA, USDA, and VA. And okay. what I can tell you is I found very clear underwriting guidelines. So one secret of my success when I'm trying to do agency loans, and every time I do them, I swear, Michael, I'll never do another residential agency loan because the underwriting is brutal for investors whose tax returns change constantly and have depreciation and all kinds of stuff. But I've learned to go to the underwriting manuals of FHA, Fannie Mae, USDA loans, et cetera, because then I can see exactly what their criteria says. And mm. if a lender ever says, oh, sorry, you don't qualify because you have more than 10 properties, for example, I can go back and say, okay, if you look at your underwriting guidelines in section 10A2, you can right. see that you can't count LLC properties against me, for example. So you can go out and you can pull directly from these agencies, what their requirements are for new loans and for assumptions. So I, like I can it. tell you with certainty from looking at the underwriting guidelines and talking to Penny Mac, I'll talk about that in a second, that FHA loans and USD loan, USDA loans, you absolutely will not qualify for an assumption if you're not going to make it your primary residence. So that's the bad news. There's no exceptions. It's one of the checklists that they have on their assumption paperwork. If you're not going to attest that you are going to live in it as a primary residence, then they won't give you the loan assumption. So don't try to go in and buy it and say you're going to live in it. If you're not, that's mortgage mm -hmm. fraud. You don't want to go to jail. It's not worth a low interest not worth rate. It. Not worth it. So what's interesting is VA does not publish their requirements mm -hmm. for loan assumptions. They could not find it anywhere. So I called the VA um, phone number for customer service they send you to Penny Mac because Penny Mac is essentially the agency that buys these USDA, FHA, VA loans. They service them. And so right. I called Penny Mac directly um, because the lender that you know has the mortgage for the seller didn't know whether I could buy the property and assume a mortgage. They just didn't know the answer. It's not done that often um, mm -hmm. that, that an investor has even tried. So they don't really know the answer. So I called Penny Mac and they looked at their guidelines while I was on the phone and they said, you know what? We can make exceptions for VA loans because to allow investors to buy them because we want to help facilitate veterans selling their homes, especially yeah. in a difficult market. So while it's no promise, the people that are actually involved in reviewing the paperwork told me specifically that yes, they can make exceptions. So basically it's kind of a crapshoot. Hmm. I'm, I've, Put a property under contract that is a VA loan assumption as an investor who's not going to live in it as my primary home, and I'm going through the assumption prop paperwork. I haven't gotten to the person handling my assumption yet to be able to discuss the details. I presume that I might get some pushback, Michael, because again, yeah. these lenders aren't used to doing this, so they may not even know what the rules are. Right. But I've learned something in my investing career 
over the last 25 years or so. And that is, I ask for exceptions always. I've gotten multiple deals done, both agency and local banks that needed exceptions to their rule. For example, buying on an auction website and them saying, you cannot finance, you must pay cash. Well, when they've had a couple buyers fall through because they Mm -hmm. couldn't get financing during COVID, they allowed me to seek a mortgage on the property. So Ah. I expect that, you know, it's kind of 50-50, whether I get someone that day that allows me to do the assumption to help out this veteran that's trying to move that can't sell their property. And I'm, I'm very hopeful because I know it's within the realms of exceptions that they will grant, although there is no guarantee. And you may hear different things. If you try to call a lender, they might tell you, oh, no, you can't you know, assume a loan as an investor on a VA loan. I can tell you that that's not really black and white and it's not true. So why not, Michael? Why not try? And yeah, that's I think what I'm you have doing. To try. I think you have to try. So uh, I know we're going to follow up this on this week to week to see what happens. It may happen. It may not. We don't know. It's definitely worth an effort. Uh, but tell me a little bit about the deal. What are, are you getting? What kind of purchase price? What's the rate on the loan? What are you, what are you hoping to get done? Sure. Yeah. This is an amazing example of what a difference in interest rate makes. I don't have the numbers right in front of me because we didn't know we were going to talk about this, but I can tell you high level. And then on a follow-up call, I can give you the, the nitty gritty details, but I can tell you that at, at this home is basically a five-year-old home. So it's like new. It's in yep. excellent condition. It's in a beautiful new air- neighborhood in a really great part of town, low crime, great schools, close to jobs. Um, it's the neighborhood you want to be in. It's got a pool and a community park. Very, very nice. It's in the 300000 range. And I actually put put it under contract for $300,000. We had an inspection and I got a little bit off of that. But at $300,000, if I were to have to put 20% down as an investor, and that's about as best as you're going to get, my interest rate was going to be about 8%. Okay, on that deal. My cash flow when I build in and I always do 5% for vacancies, 10% for maintenance and 10% for property management, I take off 25% off the top. And that's on a good quality home that's not going to need a a ton of maintenance. My cash flow is going to be negative 200 and something dollars a month. So some people might say, oh, well, I, I'll just manage it myself or there won't mm-hmm. be any vacancies or I won't have maintenance. And they would have come up with a cash flow maybe in the $100 range or less. But mm-hmm. I always figure those things in. So I would have just looked at this deal and said, next, Pass. this doesn't work, right? Pass. The yeah. rents on that home are about $2,800 a month, okay? Mm-hmm. So 300,000 purchase price, $2,800. If you look at that 1% rule, basically is going to tell you it's not going to cash flow. And at today's rate, it doesn't. But here's the amazing thing, Michael. Now, I'm having to put way more money down on this deal than 20%. So don't read loan assumption means low down payment like it was originally for the veteran that bought it. What happens on all loan assumptions for USDA, FHA, and VA is that the difference between what the home purchase price is and that mortgage is, you have to cover. So I'm putting putting about $80,000 down on this property. It is not a low money down range, but you know, property, it's basically about 25% give or take of the home price. So, Mm -hmm. you know, basically similar to going through a small bank, but here's the thing. The interest rate is (laughs) 2.375%. That's a little better than eight. (laughs) Okay. It's a little bit better. It is three times less. <laughs> it's yeah. a third of the interest rate. Okay. Wow. So with that interest rate, all other assumptions, exactly the same for maintenance, repairs, reserves, m- vacancies, it will net about $460 a month, positive cash flow. Right. Okay. So when you look at that on an $80,000 investment, it's not phenomenal. It's about a 6%. I calculated, I think, 6.8 cash on cash return all yeah. in with all of my numbers because I did get a little bit discount on the price. But 6.8% cash on cash plus a mortgage rate that is below inflation and below 
real inflation almost always mm -hmm. is basically paying me to have a mortgage. Yeah. My mortgage pay down every month with my cash is close to a thousand dollars a month yeah. net when I add cash and mortgage pay down. So mm -hmm. now you're talking, you know, 12,000 a year um, positive income on mortgage pay down and cash on a $90,000 investment. And here's the thing, if I want to, when rates come back down, I can always put a home equity line of credit on it, a, a business equity line of credit, put a second mortgage on it or something to get some of that cash back out. But you know, a thousand dollars a month on a ninety thousand dollar investment isn't too shabby, and that doesn't include mm -hmm. you know future appreciation and future interest rates going up higher to make my net spread even better mm -hmm. um, in pot in terms of positive leverage. Yeah, I just want to hit one more thing because I think a lot of people hear loan assumption and they think low down payment. Again, yeah. you're going to be paying the delta. In this case, it sounds like the the seller who was in the property five years ago. They they obviously have had great appreciation. They've also yes. had mortgage pay down themselves. Yes. So they're going to walk away with a check. And basically what's happening is in this case, VA or Penny Mac or whoever it is, is underwriting the new loan balance with you, right? Because you're going to give them your, um, right. your, your details. And they're just going to take one out, put one in if this yes. goes through. Absolutely. And essentially what they're asking for at a high level, again, I haven't received all the documentation though, is credit score, a W-2 or your tax return to kind of make sure that you can meet the mortgage payment. Um, and that's it. So, you know, they're going to look at your financials and say, do you, can you handle this payment? And, yeah. you know, if the answer is yes, you should be able to do it. Another thing that's important to, to mention, because I've gotten this question, you don't have to be a veteran to assume a VA loan. What does happen though, and this could be a little bit, you know, hairy for the, the veteran is if you're not a veteran, then they, that their benefit that gives them a certain percent um, mm. toward their down payment, basically not having to put as much down, their benefit stays with the property and that loan. So if Ooh, it's a veteran and you're not a veteran buying it, it might be a negative for them that they don't get that same benefit when they want to go buy another house. Now, a lot of veterans have enough of a benefit that they can have two homes yeah. at almost no down payment because of the, the way that they calculate it. In this case, it's a married couple who are both veterans. And so that's kind of the ideal because if if one of them's giving up the benefit while it stays with the home, as long as they stay married, then they can still use the other spouse's benefit to move on. But just know that that is kind of a complication. Um, and in fact, I did try to put a contract on another VA home loan assumption first, and they didn't accept it because he wanted to keep his VA benefit. Obviously, we want our veterans to be able to have those benefits. So um, the ideal is if you can find one that's like two veterans that are married that are selling their house on a loan assumption. And, and then that way you're not harming their benefit in any way. And you're still being able to take advantage of, of the opportunity to buy that house. Well, we will stay up to date every week, every couple of weeks when material stuff changes, we'll update the audience. Anna, where can people find you? I'm going to tell you, but I want to throw one more hint out there real sure. quick for everybody. Okay. okay this is, yeah. this is something really easy and really important. I want you to go to the MLS and I want you to look on realtor.com or zillow.com. And when you search for properties, you can type in a keyword. A lot of people don't know this, but what I did is I selected the areas that I wanted and I I'm going to recommend you use Zillow for this. So if you go to Zillow and you type in assumption as a keyword and do a search and then look at the map, for a map search, you can see the map of all homes, and then you can expand the search for the whole state if you want, or just a city that have the keyword assumption in their listing. And mm -hmm. that will help you find properties that have assumable rate mortgages. After assumption, take that out and put in assumable. One search for each word, not both together, or it won't find them. That's how you're going to find these types of deals that you can see if you qualify for, especially if you want a house hack. So that's an action item for all of you listeners. If this is something that interests you, that will help you find these properties and go ahead and make offers. You can find me on social media, Anna Kelly, REI Mom, and on my website, reimom.com for coaching and consulting. Thank you so much.